Hello, my name is Jeff Krieger. I'm the Director of Systems Engineering at Dedicated Computing, and I'm here with Dr. Chi Lu Hoi, uh, the Senior Mechanical Engineer at Dedicated Computing. And we're going to be discussing thermal design considerations when incorporating multiple GPUs into a computing platform. Uh, we're going to demonstrate through simulation that we can design a multi-GPU computing platform that performs within specification. We're going to use simulation to design all of the components before physically building a solution. We're going to investigate and study the different interactions of the components within the system. <clears throat> and then we're going to explore alternatives to further meet those specifications by minimally incorporating the, the components needed to thermally manage and to man, maintain uh, a specific acoustic level. And then we're gonna physically build and validate our simulated results. So multi-GPUs are becoming more prevalent. Um, they're being used uh, to drive higher resolution displays for general purpose uh, graphics processing workloads in virtualization. Incorporating multiple GPUs in a system is a practical approach to solving some compute needs. However, multiple GPUs in a computer increase the amount of heat that needs to be managed and the associated impact on other components in the computer. We're going to demonstrate that using simulation, we can get immediate feedback. Um, we can run what if scenarios and consider alternative designs while digging deeper into system level interaction that may not be available through observation alone. Um, we'll, I think we're going to highlight that simulation will help decrease the cost with developing these types of systems uh, and also provide the best and correct approach first before trial and error, which also increases the amount of hardware lead time and, and, and costs associated with trial and error methods. So thermal management uh, is all about keeping electronics cool. There are many different methods that exist from fans to liquid cooling, sealed liquid cooling, and heat pipes. Uh, but our focus is really going to focus on fans or forced air, um, as it is still a reliable and predictable approach. Uh, forced air convection via fans really relies on those fans moving air uh, over the components and to remove the heat. Um, it, fans uh, or forced air is a highly flexible and it's efficient in terms of reliability and cost. Uh, a, a computer fan has a mean time between failure of about 70,000 hours and it's relatively uh, lower cost than most of the other solutions. One question that you may ask is why don't we just put many, many fans into a computer to keep everything cool and not worry about uh, the, the appropriate location or the size and what they're actually doing? Well, the answer to that is that with a number of fans, you may not achieve an optimal approach to thermal management, but you will increase the amount of noise produced by that system. So we're trying to find a balance between keeping everything cool in terms of cost, uh, reliability, and the acoustic level. Um, our, our simulation and the physical validation that we're going to demonstrate really focuses on forced air using COTS fans. In general, our design goal is to build a computing system that has one 95-watt CPU, three 250-watt GPUs, and a 4U chassis that operates properly in a 35 degree C ambient environment while maintaining an acoustic level below 55 dB. We're going to be using force convection cooling on the CPU and force convection on the GPUs. Our, our uh, design goal is to not modify the GPU blower curves and to ensure there's no thermal throttling of any component. Uh, thermal throttling is when a CPU or GPU clocks down or slows down to prevent it from overheating, but this clocking down or slowing down has further impacts on the system as a whole, impacting the user or the user experience. Sheila is going to talk about our simulation and the, the four simulation uh, attempts that we did to try to understand the best approach to this design. 
Uh, hello, I'm uh, Chilu. I'm going to introduce the uh, simulation process in dedicated computing and also the details of our study. So uh, first of all, I want to introduce the uh, advantage of uh, thermal simulation. So the uh, thermal simulation as a design tool allows for greater understanding and is more economical and uh, faster method of uh, system development. So we don't need any uh, physical components to understand the thermal management in the system. And second, ANSYS IcePack is a simulation tool allows for deep analysis of fluid uh, dynamics for thermal analysis. It is especially good for electronic devices such as computers and servers that dedicate computing uh, build. Mm -hmm. Uh, third, uh, through ANSYS ice pack, we can simulate airflow, temperature, speed, uh, pressure, viscosity, etc. Uh, those parameters are very difficult to be obtained from a physical test. So uh, visualizing these parameters are really helpful for us to the best um, optimize uh, thermal management in a system for the best uh, products. Uh, four, each heat generation components is represented as a block model that has associated material properties. So we actually got the material properties of the CPU and the GPU dice from Intel and NVIDIA. The material is called uh, IHS, Integrated Heated Spreader, including uh, density, specific heat, conductivity, and the radiation behavior. Uh, we also input the fan curve into uh, ice pack, uh, which is airflow versus uh, pressure drop, and let uh, the program determine the real fan operation points. For the heat sink, uh, we define the geometry and the material of the heat sink and input in ice pack. So lastly, all component uh, block models are then assembled as a system for which various uh, parameters will be simulated. So like I said, the program ice pack finds the real fan operation points and the real uh, CFM or airflow of each fan then determine the uh, temperature of the major components. So here is the simulated uh, parameters. It matches what Jeff has said before. So the uh, all simulated parameters are uh, served to represent a fully stressed uh, system. So the CPU uh, power is simulated at 95 watts, and we also simulated three GPUs, which is 250 watts each. The ambient temperature is simulated at 35 AB, uh, Celsius, which matches our uh, typical requirement. So here is the first trial of the simulation, which represents the original configuration of the uh, system. So we see that we simulate three GPUs, one CPU with heat sink and a uh, CPU fan. We have simulated uh, uh, power supply, and also there is a block to represent the uh, SSD. There is one 80 millimeter fan in front of the chassis as an intake. The maximum airflow of the 80 millimeter fan is 48.5 CFM. Since there is no resistance in front of the fan, so the fan constantly polling 48.5 CFM into the system. So from here, we can see that the CPU temperature is only 71 Celsius, which is good, but the GPUs are significantly higher than what we typically want to see, especially GPU one and two, they are over 100 degree. Uh, we assumes that because GPU one is so close to the CPU, it actually gets extra heat from the CPU 
that's why we see that the GPU one is the hottest component in the system. So the next slide, we will show you the uh, airflow in the system. So we see that there is very limited airflow in front of the GPU because those three GPUs are so close to each other. There is very limited a gap and a space between the GPUs to allow the air get into the uh, GPU blowers. And we also see a recirculation in front of the GPU heatsink because the GPU blower tried to get uh, air into the blower, but there is not enough uh, fresh air in front of the GPU. So it actually get hot air from the exhaust and it recirculate back to the GPU and it, it makes the GPU even hotter. So our first uh, solution to solve this problem is to add a 120 millimeter fan, which has the maximum airflow at 135 CFM. So we just add this fan and rerun the simulation and find that the 120 millimeter fan actually runs at 108 CFM. So the uh, additional airflow actually makes the GPUs much cooler compares comparing to a uh, simulation number one, but actually the CPU temperature is six degree higher and the next slide will show you the reason. So we see that uh, the increased amount of airflow because of the 120 millimeter fan uh, support more air to the GPU. So the GPU is cooler. However, since the 120 millimeter fan is so strong, it pulls air away from the CPU and it got air from the 80 millimeter case fan. So it actually uh, got too much air from the CPU and that's why the CPU temperature increased. So in order to solve that problem, we added a air duct to uh, separate the CPU and the GPU regions. So the case fan, uh, 80 millimeter chassis fan still runs at 48.5 CFM and we output the fan operate point for the 120 millimeter fan and find it this time it runs at 100 uh, CFM compared to 108 CFM in simulation number two. So uh, because we lost we lost uh, 8 CFM, the GPU temperature increased about 3 degree compared to uh, simulation number 2, but the GPU temperature did uh, decrease for 3 degree. And the next uh, slide shows you the uh, airflow of this study. So we see that uh, we have an air duct to uh, separate the CPU and the GPU region. And the 100 CFM down from 108 CFM because the uh, case fan no longer supports uh, air to the GPU and the 120 millimeter fan actually got air from the very limited opening or in front of the chassis. So with the air duct, the GPU temperature increased from simulation number two while the CPU temperature decreased. So this is still not the best solution for us. So we actually think that we can cut an opening on the air duct so we can control the volume of the air from the uh, 80 millimeter case fan to the 120 millimeter uh, internal GPU fan. So we actually tried many times and find that we uh, cut a 55 millimeter opening on the uh, air duct. So this air duct has been modified and optimized and we control the opening and allow 106 CFM uh, to pass the 120 millimeter fan to support the GPU 
And I, we think that this is the best solution for the application. And we find that the CPU temperature is still, still controlled at 74 C, but the GPU temperatures are significantly lower than simulation number three, although it is slightly higher than simulation number two. So we also uh, show the uh, airflow of this study. And from this figures, we can see that the airflow air duct has been modified with a cutout to allow case fan air into a GPU region. Uh, the allowed more air to move into GPU region in reducing the GPU temperatures while still satisfying the uh, CPU thermal needs. So we control the uh, uh, CFM of the 120 millimeter fan at 106 CFM. So uh, now the system can satisfy both CPU and GPU uh, thermal needs. So here is a summary of the four studies. So the simulation number one just use a single case fan that did not provide enough airflow to cool the, to cool all the three GPUs. Uh, in simulation number two, uh, we create that to add additional fan to increase the airflow to the GPUs. The result of the that fan uh, introduction put air from the uh, case fan feeding the CPU, reducing the uh, CPU temperature to uh, increase. So in simulation number three, we add uh, air duct to stop air from being put from the CPU. Uh, so the air duct actually separate the uh, CPU and the GPU regions. The result of that was increase the GPU temperature because of the case fan no longer contribute to the GPU cooling. So in simulation number four, we uh, create to understand how the modified air duct to, to allow balance the air movement across the CPU and the GPU regions. This is our final solution. And we, the hole that we add to the air duct that allows some of the case fan air to contribute to the GPU cooling, and we still keep the CPU thermal correct. So now I'm going to give the a presentation back to Jeff and let him uh, introduce our physical build and physical uh, thermal and acoustic test to verify the uh, simulation study. Thank you, Chilu. <clears throat> so once once we've com completed the simulation, our goal was to build a physical system, a physical representation of this simulation. Uh, to understand if the physical system performs the exact same way the simulated results would indicate. <clears throat> so we, we built the, this This is the physical system that was built. It's a for you system. Um, you can see the three GPUs, the CPU, the drives, and the two fans. Um, this is what was represented in the simulation. Uh, we had to develop our own duct um, and, and we attempted to do a prototype method. So we designed the duct that we felt would fit um, in SolidWorks. You can use any vector graphics package to do this. Uh, and we took statics and cut it out on our laser cutter uh, that was fit to the case. This is the resulting uh, system that we're taking to the thermal chamber and the acoustic chamber uh, with the duct and all of the physical components inserted. Our thermal validation, uh, we used a Cincinnati thermal chamber, uh, multiple channel thermal couple module, K-type thermal couples, and uh, wired everything up. Uh, we measured really two uh, temperatures. We focus on T ambient, which is the measurement from the thermocouple, and then T other, which is any software-based reading from component level sensors. We use off-the-shelf stress packages to exercise all of the 
system components in the physical world. Um, our validation results, we kept the chamber at 35 degrees C. Uh, we found that all GPUs were running without thermal throttling. The chamber and our physical validation indicates that the thermal solution is acceptable um, and that our physical validation agrees with the simulated output. Uh, CPU simulation was 74.2 and we measured it at 76.7. Uh, the GPU one, uh, we simulated at 89 and it came in as measured at about 88. Uh, again, GPU two is an alignment where it's at 92.91 and the measured is a little less. GPU three as well, 93.32 and the measured is 92.1. Um, it's important that when we're when we're building simulated models, um, we're not always going to get everything right, so we have to go back to the block models in ANSYS to, uh, in ICEPAC to modify it so that it comes in alignment with the real world. Uh, but the benefit is that you can reuse these block models over and over and speed your development effort. Um, one other requirement was that we kept the system less than 55 dB. Um, under fully stressed, you can see from, oh, I'm sorry, the, the measured approach was an acoustics chamber, and we took four measurements, one millimeter out and one millimeter above, I'm sorry, one meter out and one meter above on all four sides. Uh, we measured a baseline um, in the chamber, then boot, idle, and stress, and we expected stress to be our defining level and it measured less than 55 uh, so that for further validates that um, this solution is appropriate when a fully stressed system was measured in conclusion we'd like to point out that uh, simulation provided immediate feedback on how our design was progressing where components could be placed uh, what the effect on system behavior was uh, trying to understand alternative designs. And we did all this without buying uh, the components, which further delays development time. Um, so we simulated the ability to understand the components, which allowed us to optimize the system level. We studied different approaches. We experimented. Uh, all of these things allowed us to do that with simulation uh, much faster than we would if we were to do that same experimentation with a physical system. Uh, but there are areas that a physical system testing wouldn't reveal, uh, such as where the eddy currents are or how the GPU blower has recirculation. Um, we wouldn't see that by a physical observation, but yet we can understand the fluid dynamics of that system without ever building it. Um, so our simulated results were accurate, um, and we believe that it's a very good method to predict, predict the physical design of a system and uh, as a great first step in speeding to market the ability to build multiple GPU systems. Um, my last point is that models can be improved over time, they can be reused, uh, and over time, your simulation efficiency becomes greater in terms of developing new uh, reusable blocks.